Hey folks, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com and I've got another developer diary for my Xenofarm game. It's a science fiction themed farming simulation. And this is the second diary, so uh, if you want to find out what the game is all about and what I have planned for it, go ahead and check out the first one. I'll put a link down below in the uh, description area. And over the last couple of weeks I've been working on updating the the script that grows my plants or kind of some of the routines that I'm using to grow these plants. So let me plop down a bunch of this test plants that I had last week. And I'm trying to optimize it because I want to have several hundred, maybe 500 plants growing at a time in the final version of this game. So I need to optimize these things as much as I can. And uh, I'm having some pretty good success so far. Last time when I showed you these, the plants were basically updating once a second, every second, and every plant. And uh, let me get a little closer here. And now what I have going on is dependent on how close the plants are to the player. So um, if a plant is very close to a player, it'll update maybe five times a second. And if a plant is far away from a player, it'll only update once every second or every four seconds or every 10 seconds if it gets very far away. So this really um, lowers the amount of processing power I need and at the same time makes things look even better. Um, when you're close up to a plant, they animate very quickly and it looks really smooth and the ones far away, it doesn't really matter that much if they're, how often they're updating. and it, it almost looks better when they're not updating at all the way I have these ones set up so I'm very happy with the way this has turned out and they still do their thing even though they're not updating their shapes they'll still drop the fruit and um, do everything that they're doing you just won't be able to see the updates until you either get closer or it does eventually update itself I do maybe need to uh, work on the transition from updating slowly to updating quickly, but otherwise I'm very happy with how this is working out. And another thing I'm doing is testing out another way to animate uh, a plant. This is something I've tried before with some fancy morphing shapes in my breeder simulation. And this uses kind of a more of a keyframe animation method where I sculpt several different versions of the same plant uh, in different stages throughout its lifetime and then excuse me and then I use a, a plug-in from the asset store called Megafires which is really awesome I think it's made by a guy named Chris West and it's basically some digital wizardry that lets you morph and bend and modify meshes in real time so I can take all these plant stages and then with Megafires I can smoothly morph between them throughout the plant's lifetime and get uh, a neat effect like this of a slowly changing growing plant. And uh, it does take a little longer to set up and I'm not a very good animator really so I don't know how many plants I'm going to do like this but I'm definitely going to do some like this because it just looks so cool. <laughs> and uh, I can also use some of the different uh, uh, modifiers in the plugin to change the plant so that each one is slightly different from the one before by bending the leaves or um, adding a little bit more of one shape than the other. It's really a powerful tool. One of the best things I've bought on the asset store actually. And I actually did a, a stress test with th these plants here the other day and I had 500 of them growing and morphing all at one time and on my computer at least it was barely it, it was still chugging along just fine it was no problem at all so I'm a little less worried about the performance issues than I was a couple of weeks ago and uh, I'm also doing I also got a little bit smarter about how to use the scripts and I can turn them on and off real quick um, when I need the plant to change shape I don't have to just keep the script running all the time which was sucking up resources. And um, the rest of the time I've been working on 
some kind of test plant shapes and uh, ideas for what plants might look like in the game here. I've been kind of going through my archive of 3D fractal shapes that I've created and making a few new plants and whatnot. Uh, most of these shapes were actually created with Mandelbulb 3D, which is a really cool 3D fractal program. You've probably seen me do some stuff with it if you've watched anything on my channel. I've got some great tutorials about how to use Mandelbulb 3D and also how to go in and grab these kind of 3D fractal shapes out of the program, put them into your own programs or into your own apps. So you can check that out if you're interested. So I got all kinds of test ideas here. Here's one that kind of looks like a, I don't know, a cauliflower cotton ball doohickey. This might be a fruit that you would harvest. Uh, couple of maybe fungusy shapes here. This one has actual holes in the 3D mesh, which I always find interesting. Um, this one's kind of like a brainy looking cauliflower shape. This one might be just something that grows out of the ground like this and you harvest. Nice and simple. This thing, I have no idea what it is, <laughs> but it sure looks cool. <laughs> I thought about maybe having the kind of clamshells on this one open up and there would be a fruit inside that you would harvest. I love the organic feeling you can get out of these 3D fractal shapes even though they're mathematically generated. They come up with some really cool shapes. Now here's another. This one's another 3D fractal who knows what it is shape. But <laughs> I was thinking about maybe having these orange parts grow over time and you could harvest them off the plant. And I have no idea what that is. Uh, this one, it's one of my favorite new ones that I made this week. It's kind of like an artichoke. This would be maybe a fruit that you would harvest off another plant. But I'm, all, I'm a, almost definitely use this one. I really love this shape. Really very natural looking. dragon pear or something like that <laughs> and what we got here this is like an asparagus looking thing that might grow a lot of this stuff is going to be kind of oversized in this game just because it looks cool and uh, it's easier for the player to see and I mean they're alien plants you might as well make them weird here's one that's kind of uh, based on like a raspberry or something This one is uh, it didn't come out so well. It didn't make the transition from high poly model to low poly very well. So I'm gonna have to try this again because I really, I really like this shape. Um, I can really see this one kind of starting out close and having all the different petals open up as it grows. And I love the colors on this one too. I just, I kind of did a hack job on the UV maps on this one. It's a pretty complicated, intricate shape. And this one is complicated and intricate, but it turned out pretty well. It's kind of a, a leafy fractal cabbage shape. I probably couldn't use it as is, but I got a lot of good details out of it, even though this is fairly low poly. And it just looks so cool. <laughs> looks like a leaf of kale or lettuce or something. And these other three over here were made... Um, with a program called NG Plant. It's an open source plant modeler, one of my favorite free tools. And uh, I just kind of made these plants in NG Plant and took them into ZBrush to paint and texture and muss them up a little bit. And uh, I really like this kind of Dr. Susie tree here. And here's like a dragon looking plant stalk and some whatever these are, a cupcake tree. <laughs> um, now I'm going to use this NG plant or maybe the Unity tree tool to try one more style of plant animation here in the next week or two. Um, both of the NG plant and the Unity tree tool will let you make a plant and then kind of just by changing the length of a few things kind of show it during different stages in the life cycle. So what I might be able to do is just 
make like a dozen different models of the same tree throughout its lifetime and then as the tree grows just kind of swap those out to uh, make the life cycle and it'd be kind of a cross between this um, just changing the size of things method and the, the morphing megafire shape uh, it would also be easier for me to make than those morphing megafire shapes so it would kind of be a, a neat trade off between the two techniques I've tried already and I think eventually I'll probably use all three techniques for different plants depending on the characteristics I want and how much work it would be to make them. I don't want to, uh, you know, it's just me working on this game, so I can't have everything be super detailed and perfect. I kind of have to pick and choose what I want to work on. But I'm pretty happy with my little uh, garden of alien delights so far. <laughs> I'd like to have eventually, you know, a couple dozen different plants that people could grow and different fruits and stuff, so I need to get as many ideas going as I can here. So, yeah, there's the progress I've made in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about the game idea. If you have any comments or suggestions about what you might like to see in a game like this, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these developer diaries. I'll be doing one every, I don't know, week or two weeks or so. It just depends on how much progress I make, how much time I have. I spent some time this week updating Crash Lander and the free demo that goes along with that to work with the new Oculus Rift DK2. So if you got a Rift, go ahead and check that out. It's a lot of fun. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.